you know, what it means to me to be in balance. And there are, and by the way, hi, Facebook Live. Looks like we're, we're on there now. Um, you know, so many of us, um, we strive for health. We strive to be in balance, but we might not even really know what that is because it's been so long since we have truly been in balance, many of us since we were very young children. So I want to tell you a little bit about how I got into this and uh, my diagnosis of Crohn's disease. I spent much of my life, um, literally decades of my life, trying to figure out what was going on with my digestive tract. I was very sick. I couldn't figure it out at the time. We didn't know a whole lot about IBS, about Crohn's, about different diseases of the digestive tract. And I went from doctor to doctor to doctor trying to figure out what was wrong with me until one day I had a lower right pain in my abdomen. And I bet you if we had a room full of people, there'd be at least half of them raising their hands saying, that's definitely appendix and you're right. Um, you know, that, that lower right pain is typically an appendix issue. And I ended up in the hospital room and had to get a CAT scan because they did think something was wrong with my appendix. Turns out it was. But during that CAT scan, they found a grapefruit sized colon or tumor in my colon. And that really started to explain what had been going on for so many years of my life with this digestive problem that nobody seemed to be able to pinpoint. So when they went in to go do the surgery, they said to me, do you mind if we do exploratory surgery and figure out what's going on with your colon? And of course you say yes to that. I was um, ah, early twenties at the time. So this was about 20 years ago for me. And I um, ended up going into the surgery. They removed that um, tumor as well as the majority of my colon and about six or eight feet of my small intestines. I still don't know exactly how much, but quite a bit. And so I ended up through honestly the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I mean, it sounds really intense and really insane that I would say that, but what happened to me in that hospital, that surgery and what came out of it was absolutely life-changing. I got very, very serious very quickly about healing myself. And when I started researching Crohn's disease, I learned a lot about what it was, what they didn't know, what they did know, how it affects everybody so differently. And maybe the most important part of it was that stress was one of the biggest triggers of Crohn's disease. And so when we start thinking about the idea that stress contributes to disease, and finally now we have westernized medicine believing and acknowledging that stress contributes to disease, that about 85 to 90% of disease is caused by stress. That tells us something, right? And when I started researching, I remember once reading the word disease, like you'll see it on the screen here, this ease. And it really clicked with me. It gave me this understanding of disease is actually the lack of ease. And if we look into what ease means, it's the absence of difficulty or effort. So disease would mean there is difficulty or too much effort that has to be had. And that definitely clicked inside my head, right? There was this light bulb that went off. And when I started looking back on my life and I started thinking about all the physical challenges I had had, I really started kind of thinking that maybe someone was trying to communicate to me, maybe a higher power, you wanna call it God, you wanna call it the universe, it doesn't matter what you call it, but this something, this higher power, my higher self, was trying to communicate to me that I wasn't living a balanced life. And I started thinking back and I remembered thinking, first I had a really bad knee accident, um, really a bunch of surgeries on my knee. And then I struggled with some chronic diseases and I couldn't quite figure out what was going on. It was almost like if someone was trying to send me a signal and I wasn't hearing it, right? They had the volume on one and they didn't listen. So they turned it up to two and I still didn't listen. So it went up to three. And then I started having real bad digestional problems and I wasn't listening four, five, six. And I was still going on with a life that was pretty unhealthy. I wasn't eating properly. I wasn't taking care of myself. I definitely didn't have the whole well-being thing going on, right? The physical, mental, emotional, psychological, community, career, all the areas that you need to focus on to be truly healthy, financial wellness. I didn't have all that going on. And so the volume just kept getting turned up until there was something that I literally could not ignore. It put me down, it took me out, it probably could have killed me, but that's when I got it. And I'm very, very lucky that I did get it. Many people go their entire life without getting it, but I know I got it. And I know that my physical challenges were trying to tell me something. And what they were trying to tell me was it was time to get into balance because I'd spent way too much of my life not in balance, out of balance. And so when I talk about balance and I talk about cracking your health code. I cracked my health code. It wasn't easy. It took me over a decade, but every single person has a different health code. 
So what I am here to teach you and what I'm here to talk to you about is how to crack your health code. Because what I did is not going to work for you. Much of it might, and it probably will, but not all of it, not the exact recipe, but I want to help you figure out what that is. And so when you think about it, I love to say, just to make it easy, this mind, body, spirit. So quite often when we talk about well-being, it is financial well-being, emotional well-being, community well-being, career well-being, physical well-being, mental well-being, right? But really we could bucket all those into mind, body, and spirit. And if you think about a tripod, it's a pretty easy way of understanding that all the legs have to be taught to. All three areas, mind, body, and spirit, have to be in alignment and have to be worked on and have to be healthy in order for you to be able to stand up properly. Because if one of them is significantly shorter than the others, right, we're going to topple over. And so what I want to talk to you a little bit today is about that. So I want to talk to you first about this new nutrition, right, this idea that nutrition isn't just food, although food is a big part of it. Food is a huge part of what contributes to our physical well-being. But I want you to think a little bit about mind, body, spirit, nutrition. So what about the kinds of programs that you listen to, right? So when you're watching TV, we all know there's a very different feeling that comes out of a comedy, that comes out of a suspense or thriller, that comes out of a very sad story or a love story, whatever it might be. All of these programs, they contribute to the way we're feeling. I'm not saying any of them are right or any of them are wrong, but I am saying we all know they leave us feeling differently than when we started. So the reason I even bring this up, because it is important to understand what we're putting into our body, not just our mouth, right? Not just food, what we're putting into our mind, the shows we're watching on TV, the music we're listening to, the other people we associate with, they're majorly affecting our health, right? So when you're putting in comedies, love stories, whatever, they're all going to make you feel differently. And the one thing that when I speak publicly, which I do a lot of, and so I get a lot of feedback on this, people will always say to me, and there is a big, a big issue of anxiety and fear, and most likely right now because of the coronavirus and everything we're dealing with, there is a lot of anxiety and fear. And the one thing I normally say to people, and I know we're on a heightened awareness when it comes to the news is when someone says, I'm anxious and I really need to get my anxiety under control, I always say, do you watch the news? And 100% of the time they say, yeah, every single day, a couple times a day, I'm obsessed with the news. And I always say, why? Why, if you're already anxious, really, and you're trying to get yourself out of that state, maybe the news isn't the best thing to watch, right? Maybe you need to focus more at that time in your life, which it won't always be, but on comedies and on feel goods and on love stories and the things that lift you up versus the things that bring you down. You're already struggling with anxiety and fear. And maybe right now during the coronavirus, you're feeling a little bit of that. And if so, maybe it's time to rein it back. There is no reason to watch the news five hours a day. They're saying the same thing over and over. You can turn it on typically for five to 10 minutes and get the exact same information rather than over and over. And so I would beg everybody to consider that as something, if you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with fear, if you have spouses, children, partners, coworkers that are feeling that way, maybe have a discussion with them around the news. And is it beneficial, right? Is that constant knowledge coming in beneficial to them right now? Because quite possibly, there could be a wet, better way of getting your news and keeping yourself out of anxiety. Um, you know, very similar to the kinds of music we listen to, right? I mean, think about rap, think about spa music, think about the things you listen to before you go to sleep or the things you're gonna use to work out with. Nothing right or wrong about any of them, but know how they affect you, know how they change who you are. They literally change what's happening in your brain and quite often in your body. So use it when it's appropriate. Use calming music at night. Use calming music when you need to help settle a child down who's anxious, right? Use uplifting, upbeat music when you want to get yourself going, when it's time to work out, when it's time to motivate, right? So understand what things do to you and then use them as a prescription for the life you want to live and the person you want to become. Use them appropriately. So I want also to talk about the moods of other people because that's a big one. You know, there's many, many studies out there that tell us the majority of your time with. And again, typically I am doing that when, when I'm live, I'm having these discussions live. And people will immediately, especially if it's in a workplace, start looking around at their coworkers and laughing, ha, ha, ha. 
but really quite often it is your coworkers. It might not even be your family, but now we're in this unique time where it's our family. And how different is your life when you're spending constant time with your partners, with your family, with your children versus your coworkers, which you probably did over the past God, forever, right? Many, many years, decades worth. So it's been an interesting shift and it, it is definitely something to know. How do those people make you feel when you're interacting with them this often? And if you're feeling better being at home, how can you incorporate that and move forward into the new normal, as we would call it? Are you going to have more time where you can spend at home? Are you going to be able to figure that out? Um, on the flip side, if you're living alone and you're feeling very, very lonely, that is completely normal. And are you excited to get back and spend time with your community members, with those people you go to church with, those people you socialize with, you go to yoga studios with, classes, your friends, you know, those kind of people are super important to us. And I think this is a really nice pause in society that we've never had. I mean, what a beautiful thing to be able to actually take a pause and decide, do I want to go back to that? Do I want to go back to the five people I was spending the majority of my time with? Did I feel better or worse with them? Are there certain people, maybe it's been nice to have a break from. Are there certain people you're dying to see again? Because that's what's important. And these are the things that we don't typically take a pause to understand. Instead, we're just on the hamster wheel and we're going, 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 and just doing what's expected of us, doing what is necessary. And it is nice to be able to take that pause, but you know, how are you gonna change going forward after this pause? Is How are you gonna keep yourself happy and healthy? Right? There's a lot of ways we're going to talk about doing that. But those moods of other people, they can change your whole day. Right? Have you guys ever had it happen where you walk into an elevator and two strangers you don't even know are in there and you can feel they have been in a fight? <laughs> you can just feel it. You can cut the tension with a knife. Right? I mean, you can feel that energy coming off of each other. Even if you're not part of it, you're going to walk into it and it is going to affect you and affect your day. So, you know, Re-understanding who it is we want in our life and how they affect us is really important. So I am thinking people who lift you up are probably better to have in your life than people who bring you down, right? Time on the couch versus out stargazing. That is a huge one. I mean, we're seeing it firsthand, cold, if you're in Michigan or other parts of the world you might be in, right? If you're inside, you're quarantined inside, it's a way different experience when you get outside and take a walk. And we all know we feel better after that walk. Why don't we do it more often? <laughs> because sometimes we don't have the motivation and we have to remind ourselves how important it is to get out and feel that versus how we feel on the couch, typically making a couple trips to the snack room or you know to the cupboard. And it's a way different feeling than getting out and moving your body and getting your adrenaline going getting your lymphatic system moving, getting your circulation moving, getting your lungs breathing heavy, deep breaths again, it all makes a really big difference on our mental, emotional, physical well-being. So of course, nature, arts, pets, I could go on for hours about this. Um, one of my favorite stories, I worked at the Detroit Medical Center, a hospital system in the Detroit area, and um, we had pet therapy. We had pets that were brought in to help people feel better and I will never forget this one time we were um, just switching over to um, mandatory flu shots because that was, mm, gosh, maybe about 10 years ago now that they made flu shots mandatory for staff. And I didn't want to get my flu shot that year. Whole nother story, not that I'm against flu shots, um, but I was, I was physically in a place where I didn't think it was going to help me, but instead hurt me. So I had actually signed a waiver and gotten, I had this little sticker over my badge, which they made us wear. And I couldn't get into the ICU. I remember fighting and struggling because I had to get in there to see someone and they wouldn't let me in. And then this woman comes walking by and she has a golden retriever and it's super cute. And they come walking by and they all just let her in. She doesn't have a bad saying she got her flu shot. The dog clearly didn't get his flu shot. Everyone walks by and it's like animals, pets are so healing. Pet therapy is such a common thing in such a sterile environment, like a hospital where I couldn't get in without a flu shot, but this dog can get in because it is so beneficial and wonderful for the patient's healing, they're able to get through. But if we see that, the studies are there, right? The, it is obvious, it is strong, the correlation with healing and pet therapy is there. And these little guys, my goodness, if you have an animal at home, you probably know as well as I do. I have a 16 year old dog and there is no one, nothing that can make me happier than that dog. I just love him to death. They are wonderful. This idea of cuddling on him and they actually cuddling 
really raises our positive health markers and lowers our negative ones, which is amazing. They do the same thing when we cuddle with each other, but we typically don't cuddle with each other in the same way. Um, meditation, yoga, deep breathing. I could have a whole few hours on all of these, literally. There are so many types of meditation. There are so many benefits to meditation. A lot of people think meditation is this woo-woo way out there, but there are scientific studies, scientific back types of meditation for different outcomes. That's the other thing, to learn the proper meditation technique is very, very important. Um, shouldn't be taken lightly. A lot of people just think it's kind of going quiet, but there's actually mantra-based meditation. There's heart-based meditation. There's meditation where you're learning how to control your breath. There's meditation where you're learning a lot of different things. So if you're interested in learning meditation, um, definitely do a search on it. You're welcome to reach out to me and ask me questions, what you're looking for as far as the benefits and what type of meditation I would recommend. Um, but it is a very, very scientifically sound way and very scientifically proven way of reducing stress. Um, I can't help but talk about the circadian rhythm, right? So this idea that our bodies are in tune with a circadian rhythm controlled by the earth. The sun goes up, the sun comes down. We have longer days in the summer, shorter days in the winter. This is all very much in tune with how we're supposed to live. And our body receives cues from nature and actually produces hormones in our body that support the circadian rhythm when we're supposed to be sleeping, when we're supposed to be waking, how that best supports our body, our weight, which is quite interesting. If we're sleeping at the wrong times, we can gain weight. We have bad hormone levels, the you know cortisol, the hormone that is actually um, very closely associated with heart disease, makes us gain the belly weight that can be thrown off majorly by not sleeping at the right times. Um, so you wouldn't see this with the naked eye. You can easily Google it, but basically a full spectrum lighting image. So you want to look and you want to look at full spectrum lighting. And there's this broad range of light that comes out of the sun. And it, it's a very large range. What happens is in the morning, it comes up with a bluer light. Again, you don't see this with the naked eye, but it's happening and it's sending cues to our bodies, that blue light. And it says, it's time to get up. It's time to start moving. It's time to start your day, time to be productive, time to sow the fields, right? I mean, literally, this is what we're supposed to be doing. So our bodies are cued in, amped up, ready to go if they've been well rested, if they're hydrated, right? I mean, if they're not hung over, these are the things we would feel in the morning from the sun. And then around midday, it starts shifting from a blue light to an amber light. And the amber light sends cues to our body to start slowing down, to eat our final meal, to start our digestion before the sun goes down so that we're completed, right? So that we have this time, this period in the evening where we're not digesting. So if we can get our food in, if we can start the digestive process and have that complete before the sun goes down, we're going to have a much better night's sleep and get to sleep by 9, 10 p.m. because that's when it's ideal for our bodies then wake up the next morning when the sun's coming up. Our body's going to be in tune with that rhythm. And that's also why we hear that when you're using, you know, phones, computers, tablets, TVs in the bedroom, that blue light is sending very mixed signals to our bodies, right? Because now all of a sudden at 9 p.m., at 10 p.m., we're getting this, this um, signal to get up, get going, start your day, work. It really screws with our circadian rhythm. It screws with our hormones. It messes us up. So if you can turn those things to amber lighting at night, you're gonna be helped a lot. If you can turn them off an hour before you go to sleep, that's gonna be very beneficial. But you can even buy some full spectrum lights and you can put them in your light bulbs in your house. And that's gonna give you that full spectrum throughout the entire day so that you're not just using the blue lights at night. And if you wanna keep those on at night, it'll help eliminate the blue. They're very, very good for you. Another thing we wanna think about is what nourishes our body is social media, right? Are you watching uplifting, amazing people and speakers and ideas? Or does everyone you follow angry with what's going on with quarantine, angry at every single politician, angry at everyone? Because that can get really draining. And you don't have to unfriend everyone and start drama around that, but you can unfollow people. And the unfollow button is by far my favorite button on all social media platforms. So definitely get yourself familiar with that. Um, it's useful. Connection. That is something that the human psyche does, right? 
um, many times we are disconnected from the things that matter. And that would be other people. Many times it's our feelings, right? Many times it's knowing what's good for us and doing the right thing for ourselves instead of self-sabotaging. It's connection with nature. It's actually getting outside and enjoying a little nature rather than being walled up all the time, which we all know is getting very, very difficult to deal with, right? We really are just dying for spring to get here so we can get outside and have a little bit of nature time. And so many of us are too connected to the things that don't matter, like this endless pursuit of money, like technology, constantly being on social media, on your phone, on whatever, you know, it's just, it's overwhelming. There's a really cool video, and this is a clickable link if you want to click on it after we're done with this and check it out. And it talks a lot about nature and our connection to it and what's missing. It's actually a really cute, funny watch. I highly recommend it. But I want to talk a little bit about primary foods, this idea that what we nourish ourselves is so much bigger than just food, right? So we have our eating habits, of course. We have the relationships in our lives. Should that be our spouses, significant others, our children, our extended family, our friends, our community members, and whatever community that might be. Those relationships are very, very, very important to our mental well-being. Um, exercise, of course, that's a primary food. How are we moving our body? What are we doing to detox? A lot of people don't understand that actually moving our body is a form of detox. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, what is our connection? What type of attitude do we have, right? How are we connected to those around us? Are we angry? Are we bitter? Are we happy? Are we high spirited? There's so many different attitudes that are out there and they tremendously affect ourselves as well as those people around us, like we talked about before. Of course, our spiritual practices, and that doesn't have to be religious, but it can be religious, right? It can be forms of gratitude. It can be, um, you know, some type of connection with our mind, body, or spirit. There's a lot of different ways that we can um, discover spirituality within ourselves. It can be with other people. It can be truly internal. Um, our career, it is very important to know how we connect with our career. Is it meaningful to us? Do we feel connected to it? Are we connected to the company's mission that we work for or our own? Do we feel good as a way we're contributing to society, right? Do we have um, a sense of belonging within that? In a trade-off, you know, that could be the work that they do to better the lives of themselves and others, right? There's a lot of different ways that can play out. Of course, our family, that's obvious, right? Our connection with family, how they feed us, how we feed them. Our finances, it is very important to be able to have um, our basic needs met so that we can grow in all these other ways because there is no way we're worried about joy and about relationships and about spirituality and creativity if we're struggling financially. And so many of us are seeing that come to light right now with this quarantine as well. The amount and quality of rest that we have, so many of us are not getting proper rest. And it might be the most important thing we can do for our body. This quarantine has probably let a lot of us realize um, how, how sleep deprived we were. And so if you're one of them, me, I was one, um, you know, catching up on your sleep a little bit right now and then realizing moving forward, I have to make more time for sleep. And that's a pretty important way to be able to reset your life and your health. So I want you to think a little bit about how nutrition and life, they affect each other, right? So I could sit up here all day long and say to you, don't eat bad foods, just eat perfectly. You'll be really healthy and don't eat cookie and don't eat sugar and don't eat all these other things. But you know that. That would be a ridiculous statement for me to say. Um, I want you to think a little bit about why you eat the way you eat, right? So think about how you eat when you're in love versus heartbroken. Can you remember the last time you really felt that enthralled in love feeling and how much you didn't care about food? Or maybe you're the type that when you get that way, it's game on party time. Let's go out with a significant other, do a lot of going out and restaurants and drinking, right? Well, how about when you're heartbroken? Heartbroken definitely brings out a different type of eating. I mean, we've all seen the Ben and Jerry's commercial with a pint of ice cream and a woman digging into it and the insinuation that she's just been broken up with. And I'll tell you what, it's true. These foods are comfort foods for a reason, right? Comfort foods are there to comfort us. And sometimes they help. And they typically only help for a short amount of time, but that's how they work. So how about when your exercise is da daily versus when you're sedentary? Right? I know that when I'm exercising daily and I'm really counting my calories and I'm making sure that I'm eating properly and I'm wanting to lose a few pounds, 
and I'm working out for an hour on the treadmill or a class, and I know that I lost maybe 600 calories in there, I do not make my way to the sweet drawer the same way I would is when I'm sedentary. And it's kind of like, oh, who cares? And maybe a lot of us have felt that around quarantine, right? Like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm already, I'm stuck inside. Why not just go ahead and keep eating? It's, it's an interesting way our psychology works. How about those days where you're super busy versus bored, right? The days that drag. When I'm super busy, it's like I wake up, I get going, I got to get on this call, I got to get to this meeting, I got to get to this speaking event, I have to do whatever. Next thing I know, it's 6 p.m. and I'm like, I don't think I ever ate today versus the days where it's dragging or I don't have quite an agenda. I could have already had three lunches on a day like that. So it's interesting and definitely something we should know is this correlation between relationships, exercise, career, spiritual practices, nutrition, they all interweave. And so when we're balanced in one area, typically that translates to a balance in many other areas. So speaking of nutrition, I know there's a lot of nutritionists out there. I'm sure that you know all the obvious things, but there's a few things I want to touch upon. Specifically, I want to talk to you about eating the color of the rainbow. And I'm not talking about Skittles, right? We all seen the Skittles commercial, but I'm talking about whole fresh foods that come up out of the earth. And the reason we want to focus on eating the color of the rainbow is because the nutrients in food, actually the phytonutrients in food, denote their color. So what that means is even someone like myself, who's a nutritionist, who has studied this, I can't always tell you if I've gotten all my vitamins in for the day. I don't always remember what's in every single food. But I can tell you, if I go up to a salad bar and I start with a plate of greens, I am going to opt for the yellow, the red, or the orange peppers instead of the green to go on top of it. I am going to opt for eggplant to put on top of that or for tomatoes to have that red to put on top of that. I'm gonna look for yellow tomatoes. I'm gonna to look for the colors to complete that spectrum for myself. Not only shopping in the grocery store, which obviously perimeter shopping is the better way to go in the grocery store, but I'm gonna do that at salad bars. I'm gonna do that when I'm looking to have dips, you know, things that, um, veggies that I dip, just looking for colors of the rainbow, right? So preparing foods in different ways is very important. Um, you know, specifically there's something called lycopene and it's a chemical that comes out in tomatoes when they're cooked. Lycopene is not there when they're raw. Lycopene is very helpful specifically for men's prostate cancer, for actually preventing prostate cancer and a host of other cancers. But it's not there when it's raw, but there are other parts of the tomato that are there that are cooked out when you cook it that you need. So it's this idea that you don't always wanna get in the slump of cooked tomatoes, also have them raw, but all the vegetables are like that. So remembering to try them, prepare them in different ways, utilize them with different things because these food combinations actually bring out health benefits. It's quite interesting when you think about cacao, cacao is, uh, I know it sounds like cocoa, but it's the inverse of that, C-A-C-A-O. And cacao actually is the highest magnesium. The cacao plant, it's like a little, you know, cacao is like a little, um, uh, like a little seed almost. And it's like a nut. You can make it into nibs. There can be cacao powder. And cacao, chocolate, and mint go so well together. It's quite interesting to know that mint opens the capillaries and that cacao can get into that and be absorbed that much easier. So quite often when taste tastes really good together, there's a reason for that health-wise, which is kind of cool. So counting chemicals versus calories, this idea that calories are important, but we need to focus just as much on keeping chemicals out of our lives. I get asked a lot about GMO or organic or farm-raised or hormone-free meat. I think it's all very important. You're gonna see studies that definitely contradict each other, right? That it doesn't matter, it does matter. Here's what I think. If I can afford to have the best meaning non-GMO, organic, farm-raised, hormone-free meats, um, I'm going to do that because the things that we're dealing with in today's agricultural society are um, new. They're new to the body, right? So I don't want to be the guinea pig. I know right now we're going through a series of tests and the humans, us humans, are the ones that are being tested on. So I would rather go with what we know to be true, which is organic and all those types of things. Um, you know, I think it's personal preference and it's certainly something that you should look into. Antibiotics, probiotics, make sure antibiotics kill all the bacteria in our gut. Probiotics help create the good ones. So make sure if you ever take antibiotics to take probiotics afterwards. And definitely we want to focus on improving our immune system. Now more than ever, we can see that. 
So eating natural unprocessed foods, making sure we're taking proper supplements, chewing your food so that you actually have the enzymes in your body. There is so much that we need to discuss about this and specifically not only what goes in our mouth, but on our body. We wanna look a little bit at the chemicals around that. And I'm not saying go throw everything you own out by any means, I'm not saying that. I am saying maybe you wanna start going a little bit more towards a holistic route. Um, you know, there's no filter on our skin. Everything we put on our skin goes directly into our body. So check the ingredients on your favorite products. And maybe you can start slowly transitioning when one of them runs out, find a natural alternative. They're really starting to show up and they're very, very good um, types of products these days. So we want to detox definitely, you know, moving our body is a huge detox. It sounds crazy, but it is. I want you to think a little bit about if I were to bring my knee to my chest, right? I would actually be cinching my hip joint. And when I let go of that knee and go along with that, I'm actually allowing blood to flow through at a higher rate. I'm allowing the lymphatic system to flow through. So that type of movement everywhere in our bodies when we're running our arms, our legs, they act like pumps for the lymphatic system, which helps us detox. We need to move and we don't do enough of it. This quarantine has reminded me of that in a way I haven't been reminded of in at least a decade. Move our bodies, we're supposed to sweat. We're supposed to do that. That's how our body eliminates toxins. So heck, while you're working at home, maybe go without deodorant or antiperspirant. Maybe let yourself sweat because there is a huge health benefit to that. Dry brushing. This is what a dry brush looks like. Dry brushing our body gets our lymphatic system moving always from the tips of your fingers, tips of your toes, up towards your heart, right? We want to definitely make sure we get sleep because sleep is when we detox. Our body is so smart. It knows what to do. Eating fiber. We all know eating fiber is good. The reason is it sweeps the body. It's like a broom for the body. It goes in, it gets out all the nasties, gets out all the old stuff. Make sure you're doing that. There's certain supplements that can really help you detox too, but a good quality supplement is probably the best thing that there might be out there. I'm um, actually in the process of creating a supplement brand because I can't find a supplement brand that I trust enough to be able to refer to my family, my friends, or those I'm speaking to, or myself. I buy little tiny things from everywhere because I can't find a good one a day and I'm working on creating a great one. I wish I had it ready to share with you, but it'll be here soon. So I also, you know, we've talked about the mind, we've talked about the body. I want to talk a little bit about the spirit and we already did talk about this, right? It doesn't have to be religion. It can be religion. It definitely could be this idea of prayer or meditation. I like to say, because people say to me, oh, you know, I meditate. And it's similar to prayer, but not the same. I, I like to think that Prayer is talking to God or the universe or my higher self, whereas meditating is listening. And I do get some pretty interesting downloads um, and ideas and revelations. I mean, I come to a lot of really good information when I'm sitting there listening for it. And it's a wonderful practice. I really, I can't recommend it enough. Practicing visualization. I mean, there are more and more stories coming up about it. All started, you know, a long time ago, but specifically with The Secret. What was that, like 20 years ago? That um, documentary that really helped drive it home and the law of attraction and why visualization works. And maybe it just helps us focus on a goal and achieve it. Maybe it actually brings it into our existence. Maybe we are like an antenna and anything we think or say or focus on is putting something out in the universe that then gets attracted to us. I strongly believe that, but no matter what, it works, right? And so learning a little bit about that and understanding why gratitude is very much like a law of attraction point, the more grateful we are for the wonderful things in our life, the more wonderful things show up for us, right? Sometimes we get these moments of spirit when we're helping others. That's why it feels so good to volunteer. It feels so good to help others. Um, now more than ever, we're seeing that in the pandemic and seeing people and community members come together and assist each other. It's really, really cool. Of course, you know, there's all these different ways you could be experiencing this. I am someone who loves to retreat. Um, I go away on retreats for very long periods of time. I clear my head. I get very silent. I get very clear on what I want in life, very much like what we're coming out of right now with quarantine. I will say retreating is hard. Silence is hard. The most difficult part of all of it is coming back into society. It feels very weird to come back into society and realize all these things I thought I liked, all these things I thought I wanted to get more information to were not the things that were my favorite. And then it's time to make serious changes. So I think we're all going to be going about that. And as you move forward, I want you to consider what that's like and how you can see spirit in each other. 
Um, there's a really great eye contact video here. I just can't recommend it enough. I've had a few really cool experiences where we've done eye contact um, exercises and there's nothing like making eye contact with people and really being able to move aside all the words and really get down to who each other are. Um, if you wanna check it out, that video is very, very worth the watch. So I really think we are very much in a global retreat and we're going to be integrating back into this new normal that we're gonna to have to deal with. And how do you take with it the things that support your health, the things that support your mental, physical, emotional, occupational, you know, community health? How are you gonna be able to move forward and do that? Cause it's gonna be hard, right? It's, it's, we're gonna see, I think people going where they numb out, that's gonna be the way they go and they just go back into their old life, regretting it or not, or they're gonna do the work to change their life moving forward. If that's on a personal level, a family level, career level, it doesn't matter, right? These are gonna be hard things that we're gonna do and we're gonna either choose to have this intimate moment with ourselves and others or to completely avoid it. But I think the most important thing that we need to do is realize we're human, right? Have some compassion with ourselves and this idea of the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of the time do the right thing, eat the right foods, move your body, foster your relationships, 20% of the time, you're human, right? Have the ice cream, have the wine, have the whatever is important to you because it is very, very, very important to have that balance. I am all about finding that balance, transitioning with ease, taking one step at a time to be able to get closer to it. And that's essentially what my book is all about is how to you, you know, what are, what are the ways you make these steps forward and how do you do it slowly, effectively, and one that is not going to hurt because if it's hurting, if it's stressing you out to get healthy, that's not health, right? So we need to be able to get there. Um, these are the ways you can contact me. I have a personal website at CassieSobleton.com. I have um, Stinbella, which we haven't talked about. Nonetheless, um, pretty soon the wellnesscollection.com will be up. This is the one I'm super excited about to be able to give educational videos, health and wellness tips and tricks, um, kind of a, a community of wellness for people to be able to go and find this information, find quality products that support their health and, um, in their well-being and that of their family. So I very, very, very much thank you all for being here. And it's 2.40 exactly. I want to be respectful of your time. And thank you to Selena, Selena from Neon Media and from Viv, or to Viv, um, from, from High Tech for having me on. This has been wonderful. And I really look forward to continuing on and all the good work that High Tech is doing. It's really, really a lot of fun to watch. And I appreciate you guys having me on here. Thanks, Cassie. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you on. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care.